everyone. Welcome to The Honorees, a brand new MDC TV show dedicated to follow up with the recipients of the MDC's Endowed Teaching Chairs program that selects distinguished professors every year who continue to demonstrate excellence in teaching, effective communications with students, and professional growth. I'm your host, Jez Katambe. Our guest today is Dr. Rosani Alvarez, the 2013 Northern Trust Bank of Florida Endowed Chair Award. Dr. Alvarez, welcome to the honorees. Thank you for having me. I'm really mm -hmm. excited to have you with us too. Uh, before I start asking you any questions, uh, we have a video that shows a little bit of your teaching style and I'd like to invite our viewers to experience your classroom interaction through the video. Uh, here, let's, uh, let's take a minute to watch. Helping students to overcome their challenges and fears in mathematics is the motivation for her pedagogy. Using a more holistic approach and making connections with the real world, she strives to improve their confidence and success. It is an honor to be the recipient of this year's Endowed Teaching Chair um, because of the fact that it is uh, an award that it is based on a committee of my peers. One of the things that I would always remember about Dr. Alvarez is not only that she's an amazing teacher, reason being I took her two years consecutively, but it's also the fact that she always engaged so much in her students. She would bring professionals from outside and taught and exposed students about all these other careers that many teachers don't, don't really offer this to students. They don't offer these qualities and it's something I personally feel grateful for. Some things that really made me make me feel good is when I run into my former students or see where they are now or what they've accomplished. Professor Alvarez has influenced me academically in the sense that she inspires me to keep going forward, to always do my best, to always achieve for greatness. And it's always such a great pleasure to feel that there's someone there for you at all times. I love graduation. It's one of my favorite days. I'm always there um, because for that reason I get to see them, you know, attaining their goal. I get to see them with their families and it's, it's not just their goal, it's, it's their families as well. The best way to describe Professor Rosani's teaching style is the same way a student's address her. Like everyone, every student calls her Professor Rosanis instead of Professor Albers because she's like a friend for every student and at the same time she helps us understand math, high level math or low level math. It doesn't matter. It's like a friend in the classroom setting. I love my job. I love influencing students. Um, I want them to have a positive attitude not only towards math but towards education, towards uh, achieving their goal and um, I love that I'm part of that. Well let me congratulate you again on your award. What does it mean to you to be an endowed teaching chair? Um, well like I said um, uh, this award is very special to me because first of all it is an award that um, you are selected from a group of peers so this makes it that much more special. Also, um, there are other many um, other faculty that apply that are very deserving and outstanding faculty members. So to be selected among so many faculty that are such uh, incredible faculty that I, that I work with um, is an incredible honor. It's really humbling and um, I'm, I'm just honored to have received this award this year. You should be. Now, obviously, you know, everybody wants to know what next? What do you do next? So for you, is there a next step? Is there a new goal? Um, I'm always uh, working on different projects. Currently, I'm, I'm still working on the Exact Sciences Conference that I organize every year. But I'm also working with a group of students on a mobilized grant where uh, just recently in November, they organized um, a, an event where students are helping other students uh, succeed in different types of activities. For example, this particular activity that they uh, organized, they had uh, students share their different 
study skills and test taking strategies. So students did this all on their own. I was the faculty advisor. Now they're going to have another type of event coming up next month. Um, but I'm always working on different types of projects to promote you know, a positive attitude towards mathematics. Um, in April, the math is Math Awareness Month. It's, we know we have a lot of activities. We have the oh, Agdrop Oh, definitely. Concept, so, um, a lot of different projects like this. Oh, wow. So now, do you have anything planned with, uh, with your students for Math uh, Awareness Month? I'm sure you're really busy with so many projects. Yeah, and uh, during the, the month of April, the first week of April, we always have, we started off with the exact science this week. And then that week, um, I organized that with colleagues and we have speakers coming in to, to talk to our students um, about their fields. So I think it's very important for students sure. to meet uh, professionals that are out there working in the field. And I've um, organized this for, you know, since 1993. Um, so we have uh, engineers coming in, computer scientists, marine biologists, meteorologists. We've had all different, you know, professionals coming in. Uh, for the students, it's really important for them to get to speak to these uh, professionals on a one-to-one -one basis. Sometimes uh, they share business cards. They bring in information about the companies they work for. Um, sometimes we've even ha had field trips where they can actually go out and visit some of these corporations. Um, we've also had, um, during this time, we have, uh, like I said, the egg drop contest. We, we have presentations that the students give themselves. So we have um, students sometimes present, uh, they give presentations on, let's say, if their major is business, they will put together a presentation on how um, math plays an important role in business or in, um, let's say, not necessarily engineering, obviously in that field it's a little bit more obvious, but in different psychology, for example, and then they have a presentation during the month of April where you know, anybody can come and see. So we make it like a whole month with different activities for, for people to come and see. Wow, that home. sounds so great. I mean, it sounds like you really get engaged mm -hmm. with the students. We have to take a short break right now, but when we come back, I have some more questions for you about uh, some of the other awards that you've won. So you're watching the honorees. We're gonna take a short break, stay with us. Learn more about Miami-Dade College's clubs and organizations. Hi everyone, welcome to Meet the Clubs. My name is Jessica Ruiz and Chalco B is a cultural organization. Student Government Association is an organization which promotes community service. We're doing Camilla's House and beach cleanups. Being part of SGA at the Hialeah campus, when the students come to our campus, most of them have come from another country. Hello everyone, you are watching Meet the Clubs and today we have the Face Club here. I didn't have any friends, so when I met the Face Club, I had new friends. Welcome to Meet the Clubs. Meet the Clubs on MDC TV. Welcome back to The Honorees. I'm your host, Jez Katambe, and today we're talking with Professor Rosani Alvarez. Now, Professor Alvarez, I know your teaching philosophy is uh, take large tasks and break them down into several little tasks that you can accomplish. I think the, the quote from your website was yard by yard and inch by inch, it's a cinch. So how does that work with your students? Is that always a sure thing? Well, uh, nothing is a sure thing with my students. Um, yeah, yard by yard, math is hard, and inch by inch, math is a cinch. I, I kind of... Uh, it's, it's a silly kind of quote, but really it's pretty powerful. And um, it's, a, it's a philosophy that I've always used. I think from my computer science background, it's, it's the way we were trained when I, when I did my bachelor's. It's break down your, your big problems into smaller ones. It's the top-down design philosophy. But it's also my dad's philosophy in, in life. You know, whenever I'm overwhelmed with everything, he always takes tells me, you know, break it down into smaller parts, things you can accomplish, and you'll see that you'll get it all done. 
And I've always just, you know, grown up thinking that way. So my students, when I'm teaching and I, you know, present a complex problem and they become, you know, I see them becoming overwhelmed right away. I always show them how it may look scary um, when they first look at it, but how it really is and how they can just break it down into smaller parts. And really each of those smaller parts is something they can do. You know, they can multiply, they can add, they can, you know, even if in calculus, they can find the derivative. We can do all these little pieces, so together we can put it all together. And um, once they see that, you know, they, it's almost like their anxiety level drops. So I use this all the time with them. It's like, you, you know, don't be threatened by the big picture. You can always break it down and, and it becomes something that, that you can do. Well, you know, we always say that, that math is that universal language. And I know we have students from so many different backgrounds mm -hmm. at Miami-Dade College. Um, can you tell me a little bit about working with students from different backgrounds? What are your students like? Um, well, definitely working at the Inter-American, you have students from, from diverse backgrounds. Um, and I really love that about the Inter-American campus. Um, but in addition to that, I'm also teaching at the Honors College as well. I've been teaching for the Honors College since its inception at the Inter-American campus. So I also have students from uh, different levels. I have students that are, uh, could be, you know, college prep or developmental level and also students that come very well prepared that are in the Honors College. So sometimes I will go from teaching an Honors Calculus class and then my very next class is a, a developmental class level class oh, wow. I have to like you know switch gears almost but I've I've uh, learned to you know I started noticing that I can really use that to my advantage and their advantage because the honor students are sometimes very you know excited and eager to help and the developmental level students need help sometimes Sure. And now, do you find it difficult to change gears that way? Um, I, I really don't. I mean, I can go from one class to the other pretty easily, so it's it's not really a challenge for me. But I was able to to you know start a peer tutoring program where the honor students you know volunteer and are tutoring the lower level students, not just developmental ed, but even the MAT 1033 intermediate algebra. They go into the math lab and volunteer to tutor, and also they, um, they go into the classroom and tutor the lower level students, and it really benefits both. Oh, I bet it does. It seems like it's a really <laughs> great approach. Mm -hmm. Now, um, speaking of, of teaching techniques, um, I know one of, the, one of the concepts we were talking about earlier was um, using different styles and incorporating mm -hmm. technology. So with the ever-changing face mm -hmm. of technology today and its increasing use in education, do you find it difficult to keep up or that you have to modify your teaching style to keep up with the way that technology changes every day? Um, you do have to keep up with with the changing trends. I mean, technology changes, you know, very quickly. It changes yearly, <laughs> if, if not faster than that. Sure. Um, in math, I always feel that you have to be very careful the way you use technology. You have to be responsible about it and use it in a way where it helps you and it doesn't hinder and make it uh, and make students, um, I guess, become too dependent on it. So um, it, there has to be a balance, mm -hmm. but I actually feel that I am constantly evaluating my teaching, my teaching strategies and updating them regardless, with or without technology, because I feel that I have to evaluate the way my students are learning. And sometimes it, it, it may be within the same semester. In one class, something is working. In another class, it isn't. So I have to be reevaluating constantly. So now, with that ever-changing um, face of, of teaching styles and the way that you always have to evolve, um, it's always a challenge to sort of get students to understand how math works in the real world and how mm -hmm. they're going to need to use it outside of the classroom. How do you impart that to your students? How do you give them that sense of, of the real world mm -hmm. need for math? Well, I have to incorporate that um, and that becomes kind of a challenge sometimes depending on the level that, that you're teaching. 
you know, in the lower level classes, sometimes um, I try to incorporate it in very simple ways where they could, you know, see how they have to use it in an everyday basis so they can understand the appreciation for it. Because some of the lower level classes is where they really have, uh, you know, a fear for it or why do I even need to go through this, you know. Um, and I and I try to make them see how it's it's everywhere. Um, also, in the higher level classes, especially in the honors classes, um, I try to incorporate projects where they can themselves do some research on how they uh, how their own fields and I group students by related fields, so they can go out and look for applications within their fields, um, and they they present it to the class where either calculus, trigonometry, or whatever course it is that they're taking, and they need to find a way where math is used, and math may be used. I, I mean, I've had incredible presentations of, you know, where it's used in biology, sure. you know, in all kinds of, of ways. So they they get to answer their own questions So like we really that. get to see that math is all around mm -hmm. us. We have to take a short break right now. You're watching The Honorees. I'm your host, Jez Katambe. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Every year, Miami-Dade College selects distinguished professors who continue to demonstrate excellence in teaching, effective communications with students, and professional growth. Learn more about these incredible professors as Jazz Katambe asks them the questions you have in mind. The Honorees, all new episode with your host, Jazz Katambe. A world of education and opportunity within reach. You're watching MDC TV. Welcome back to The Honorees. I'm your host, Jez Katambe, and our guest today is Dr. Rosani Alvarez, Professor of Mathematics at Miami-Dade College's Inter-American Campus. Now, Professor Alvarez, I'm dying to know a little bit more about your background um, and your achievements. I know in 1984, you completed your Associate of Arts at MDC, um, and then you went on to your bachelor's degree in computer science at FIU. Um, and from there, you uh, completed your master's at the University of Miami, also in mathematics, and then a PhD at FIU in computer science. Can you tell me a little bit about what that was like, um, pursuing such difficult degrees and such a rigorous academic background? Um, well, I started Miami-Dade College um, as, a, as a high school student. I was a dual en enrollee back then. Um, so it was a little different than it is right now. I would go to high school during the day and I went to Miami-Dade in the evening. So when I graduated with my bachelor's from FIU, I, I, I completed my bachelor's in three years. So I was really young. Um, then I went on to, to the University of Miami to, and I ended up with two masters. Uh, you know, I just- Two masters, two. <laughs> wow. In math, You're quite the achiever. Science. Oh my um, goodness. And then I actually defended my master's on the same day that I interviewed for the position that I currently hold. And um, <laughs> it was on the same day. Wow, no stress, right? No. <laughs> and um, once I graduated from the University of Miami with the two masters, I decided that I would never, ever, ever, ever return to school. <laughs> and three years later. <laughs> so what motivated you to go back? Um, I, I love to learn. It's as plain as simple as that. I love to learn. And um, if I could, really, I would just continue going to school forever. Uh, I love the classroom. And I think that's part of why I love teaching so much is because I, I love to learn. I'm like a lifelong learner, I guess. Um, and I, I, I carry that into the classroom. Oh, your students in the video mm. we watched were saying, how your, your energy is so contagious mm -hmm. and it just makes them want to learn. So obviously something is carrying through. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. So I know you've motivated your students to go above and beyond. Um, and actually I wanted to ask you if you could tell me about Polly. Well, Polly um, was a project that I worked on with a group of students. It was the Student Leadership Academy at the Inter-American Campus in 2011. 
and it was an amazing experience uh, for me as well as this group of students. We had um, a spring semester to work on a project and the project was um, to promote math. So it was a dream come true for me. And this was um, actually something that was started by Dr. Gina Cortez Suarez, who was our campus president at the time. So I was given this uh, project and um, there were 10 students working with me and we were, uh, we were well, we were given the, the task of constructing the world's largest polyhedron, which consisted of 31,000 pieces without any instructions. So it was like, imagine, there were not Legos, but imagine having to construct this, let's say out of, you know, Lego pieces, but there were not Legos. It was a little different than that. We did it over four days. Um, we worked from eight o'clock in the morning till about 11 o'clock at night. It was um, next to my dissertation, the most difficult thing I've ever had to do. And we did feel, all 10 of us, like, like we gave birth to Polly. We named it Polly because we felt um, so close to this big polyhedron. It was 10 feet in diameter. It was huge. Um, we had to bring in scaffolding and everything in order to get to the top. It was humongous. That's incredible. Yes, it was a big accomplishment and um, it was on exhibit for a couple months uh, in the courtyard at Inter-American Campus and it was, it was really beautiful. Wow. Very proud of that. <laughs> you should be. That's quite the accomplishment. Mm -hmm. And and you did it with such a small team mm -hmm. in well, we such had a, a short lot of volunteers. Time. We did, I have to say, we, we had volunteers that came and worked on uh, different pieces of it throughout the four days. But the the leading, um, we had the, the Leadership Academy that, was, that led the project. Oh, okay. So mm -hmm. it wasn't just you. There were quite no, a few yes, people yes, working yes. on it. That's yes. great, though. Now, mm -hmm. we talked a little bit. Um, about the exact sciences week mm -hmm. that you coordinate every year. Um, and I was hoping you could tell me a little bit more about um, the other activities that you've planned, mm -hmm. um, like the Student Leadership Academy and mm -hmm. the construction we talked about. So mm -hmm. how did those fit together? Well, d um, during the Student Leadership Academy, that was, like I said, an entire semester, spring semester. Mm -hmm. And dur it was, like I said, to promote math and a positive, you know, positive attitude towards math. So it was really trying to make math cool or change students' attitude towards math, not, uh, you know, not making it the, the, or turning students from having that negative attitude towards math. Um, so we got to do a lot of cool things and fun things um, that whole semester. So we had a lot of things. We had a huge pie day kind of carnival thing and you know where we did a lot of interesting things with math it wasn't just selling pies and things like that we had you know games where they actually had to think and and use some cool concepts um, so we had to bring some fun things and make uh, you know f some things fun but at the same time we got to incorporate some uh, I guess mathematical concepts or uh, things where they actually had to, to think, you know, where students actually had to use some innovation and some techniques. And it really brought the campus together and it made it, it, it you know, it made it fun for them. It really, you know, brought the whole campus together. The egg drop is the same way. The campus comes in and participates in this. Whether or not they're engineering majors or math majors, they all participate. Now, last year, uh, you traveled with 50 students to Salzburg, Austria for mm -hmm. a global seminar. What was that like? Um, that was an amazing experience. Um, I, I traveled with uh, three other professors and one of the honors director, and we went with um, 50 students to Salzburg, Austria, and also Vienna. And uh, we got to experience uh, an amazing uh, global sen seminar. Uh, the theme was human rights. The students got to uh, participate in um, many different presentations um, with faculty that were visiting there at uh, Salzburg. And also the students got to, uh, they, they were uh, separated into groups and they had to come up with a project themselves and give presentations on what they've learned. Um, it was an amazing experience and it was, this is um, due to the 
their uh, participation in the honors program, in the honors college program. So, um, like I said, I've been I've been teaching for the honors college for quite some time. So this was, you know, a, an amazing experience to travel with them. It sounds like that was really like a big capstone yeah, for you and absolutely. for your students. Mm -hmm. Dr. Alvarez, thank you so much for being with us today on The Honorees. Thank you. It was my pleasure. And thank you for watching. I'm Jessica Tombe, and we'll see you next time on The Honorees.